OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network All right, so hello and welcome to using images, GIFs, emojis, and videos for productive practice. Um, my name is Chris Velache, and uh, with me, uh, Christy Reyes and Katrina Tamura will be presenting. Um, we are from Miracosta College in Oceanside. Um, so welcome again. Um, before we begin, can you please chat in or share in the chat? Uh, your answers for these questions, what do you teach, where, what is one way you, um, you use one of these to have students produce the language you are teaching them. So images, GIFs, emojis, or videos. So real quick here, share in the chat your answers. And you also see a poll. So um, whichever one you want to do first, we're just curious. Um, it seems like the majority of you know what a GIF is, so I'll give you about five more seconds to um, answer the poll question. And okay, I think everybody, we only have one person who doesn't know, so that's good, but you're going wow. to learn a lot more about <laughs> how you can use GIFs in just a moment. Awesome, awesome, very nice, very interesting, very good. So um, at the end of this presentation, these are our objectives. Um, at the end of this presentation, um, you will know ways to use uh, online images, GIFs, and videos to have students produce orally and in writing the verb tenses, parts of speech, and other grammar structures they are learning in communicative activities to build students' fluency and accuracy. So we hope that we can sparkle some ideas today with the samples we will give you. Um, you will also experience how to use these activities for front-loading vocabulary through previewing, predicting, and labeling activities for scaffolding lesson content, for class warm-ups, reviews, and exit activities, and for focused uh, pronunciation and or accent reduction activities. So we have a lot of things to show you today, and let's begin. So the tools that we use, I teach a level one ESL class, and these are the tools I use a lot when I prepare my lessons. I use Giphy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Giphy is a website. It's free. You can find a tons of GIFs um, in that website. I also use OnScreen. If I make a small video, um, I usually take away the background um, yeah, the background image, and I made my own GIFs. So I, I use on screen. I also use a lot of Google images, Snapchat for filters, and um, Adobe um, Sparks. Now, my coworker, Katrina Tamura, teaches an intermediate ESL level, and she uses Buncee and Bitmoji. She will tell you a little bit about Buncee and Bitmoji. And Christy Reyes, an advanced ESL instructor, teaches um, her class with um, using these tools, so the Emoji Generator, Flipgrid, and YouTube. So let's talk a little bit about my class. So as I told you before, I teach a level one um, ESL class in, I use tons of images for communication, for prompting, for students' uh, production. So I'm gonna show you a few lessons and give you some ideas on how I apply these images and GIFs for my students' um, language production. So let's start with uh, lesson number one, introduction. So as you can see, introduction, how do you explain introductions without even translating? So I usually have something an action i use a lot of gifts to um illustrate action so what what do i want students to do introduce themselves hello how are you so there is always a um, a gif on a title of what i'm teaching so this is an example of um the you know the activity we do at the beginning of the semester beginning of the class what's your name and i have my gif here which is a little personalized 
so they can see this um, GIF over and over, and then we can practice this throughout the semester. What's your name? What's your name? My name is, my name is, so repetition, and um, they have the prompt there. This is another uh, question of introductions. What do you do? I am a teacher. Um, I also give them help, you know, if they need to write the sentence. Again, it's um, something that has been very successful in my class. Um, nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. So we go over this, the beginning of the first of two weeks of uh, my class. <clears throat> Instructions, also very important to, for students to understand what they need to do. So again, I usually um, have my gifts there, so introductions. So for example, this one, um, if you were my students, what do you, th what, what is the answer for this? What is the, the target language you want, um, you want to say? So if you, the answer is fill in, if you want to chat, I would like to see your, your answers. Can you guys chat the answers? Pretend you guys are my students and I'm going to show you a couple of slides with the pictures and the gifts and I want you to type your answer. So this is fill in. Um, next instruction, can you type your answer? What do you think the instruction of this GIF is? Scroll up, right? Scroll up. So we have the picture and then also the arrow, pretty simple. Um, let's do another one here. This one is pretty, pretty easy to guess, right? So the instruction here is click, click. So you have an image to show what that, what that means. Um, Let's do another another one here. What about this one? What is the instruction here? Underline, underline, right? So underline if you need to underline. So again, it's something easy to catch easy. There is not a lot of explanation. You show them, show them a picture and it's easy to understand. Now, I, this is a lesson of grammar. We do grammar in level one. So this is a lesson in present continuous. So I have a deck of um, slides with a lot of action verbs. For example, this one, he is brushing his teeth, right? So we go over that, oh, he is brushing his teeth. Or for example, this one, what is the action? What is he doing? What is he doing? Oh, he is combing his hair. So there is a bunch of ways that you can uh, you know, you can prompt students to produce that language, either with a GIF or, and then help, or, you know, just a GIF for them to, to think about it and then um, give you the answer. Another thing we do is um, this sentences, like uh, the arrow indicates past. I explained to them, hey, the arrow means that this sentence, sentence is in the past. So he drank coffee. <laughs> he drank coffee. So we go over the action verb. So drink coffee. So past tense, drunk. Another example of that is again, past tense. And um, this one is I. And then what is this? What do you think this action or this verb mean? Paid, past tense gas and power, right? So again, you have those key components for students to think about and then create their sentences. You can also have them chat uh, with you or uh, put their answers in a chat or have them verbalize that. Now I added this for the gram. I recently added this. Um, we were doing can for ability. So um, I don't know, they just laugh more than we did something, but they get the idea, ability. Oh, he can play the guitar, he can uh, cut meat, he can uh, play the trombone. <laughs> so again, you're showing them actions and um, it's very uh, simple for them to, um, you know, have the answers if they have a visual aid. Um, this one was a grammar lesson for prepositions. So where is, where is? So you can use either a GIF or um, just an image and change, you know, the uh, location of the image and you can prompt students to tell, hey, where is Aldo or where is Texas? Again, pictures and or GIFs. 
um, a lesson of phrasal verbs. As you guys can see, this is a phrasal verb. Um, so what is the phrasal verb here? What is the action um, happening here? So jump over, right? So you illustrate what is jumping over. The cat jumped over the gate, right? Um, another one with phrasal verbs are this one. This one is very simple. So we're looking at look up, look up. He looked up, right? Illustrating that as well. And another phrasal verb, what, what is that one? Look through, he looked through the window. Again, this uh, gifts can be found anywhere on the internet. Um, Another one, this is one of my favorite ones. It's a funny one because it's perfect looking around <laughs> like you're lost. So look around, what is he doing? Well, he is looking around, looking around. Um, now, let me show you a little bit of um, a reading. We do reading for my level one class, uh, but we do reading uh, words. So we, we've we been working with uh, consonant blends. So this one illustrate what crawl means so a spider crawls a snake crawls or a baby crawls so crawl let me give you another example here um, when we do pronunciation and reading i try to use as many images as possible so students know what to do what to read how to read a word so here is an example of a practice we do with the TH, which is pretty hard for, um, for students to produce. So the TH bathtub, right? So you're giving them a visual aid. How would that TH look like when they are making the sound bathtub? Um, another lesson for my level one class um, is this. Um, diagraph a chair right again you have the visual aid here so they know how their mouth should look like when they produce the ch sound um, this one is um, compound words we we also learn compound words very easy you can use emojis for that um, and then prompt students to tell you well you have a cup and then cake what would be the compound word cupcake. Now for writing for my level class, uh, again, I use a, a lot of visual aids and gifts, as you can see. Um, this one is I like shopping, right? So shopping. Next one, I prompt my students to do the same thing. But now this a hand pointing down, which they know because they use text, they text families using emojis. So this would be, I don't like to iron, right? So they have fun with this. They all agree we all don't like to iron. <laughs> so it's, it's a fun um, lesson. Another one would be this one. So you can prompt, what do you think uh, is this sentence? What is, what is the statement here? So I love, I love now, this could be a little difficult for some, but you know, you can prompt them to, you know, give you clues or as to what's happening in the GIF. I love dancing when I clean. It's a little more complex uh, sentence, but um, they get it. <laughs> I love dancing when I clean. So the next time you use the same um, activity, they tend to, they, they go back and try to remember, oh, dancing when I clean, right? Um, let's see, I also use a lot of emojis like this ones and prompt students to write a sentence like he is from Brazil, she is from Mexico, she lives in Mexico. So different options um, for these types of pictures. Um, this one, they, so we use the emojis to practice pronouns. So he, she, they, um, and you can use pretty much a lot of images, emojis, Google images to prompt students to write sentences. Another thing that we do is spell, we're working with their spelling, um, spelling their first name and their last name. So 
we uh, practice with simple um, or just easy words. For example, beach, uh, B as in bear, E as in elephant, A as in apple, C as in car, H as in hat. Again, um, pretty fun activities uh, with tons of pictures here. For pronunciation practice, I have created a videos as well. This was made with Adobe Spark and it's a very weird video, but um, they laugh and they, they enjoy watching. This is a video of how to pronounce the V. Um, I have um, a lot of students who have a problem pronouncing the letter V. Um, so let me show you real quick how that video is and then just for a couple of seconds here. I don't know. If... Hello, students. Today, Sorry. we are going to practice the letter V. Now, I know it's pretty weird, but... <laughs> v. v. So I use Snapchat v. for this one, for the filter. Violin. And I know it's very strange. Violin. But again, I want them to see Violin. the mouth how they Dan. need to be moving their lips Dan when they higher. pronounce Dan the V. So let me Vines. close that one. This is this was made with Adobe um, Adobe Spark, and um, we had fun with it. <laughs> Next one is another video, and this one is a conversation making a doctor's appointment. I use filters, and the the target uh, vocabulary was runny nose, fever, so then they see um, the symptoms of the cold as they are listening to a conversation. Pretty strange. Let me show you for a couple of seconds here. Hi, this is Chris Velache. <coughs> I am sick. I need to Filters. make an appointment. Why not use them? I have them? a fever and I'm dizzy. Yes, okay. that's fine. Thank you. So that is for a um, conversation practice, making a doctor's appointment. And this one is using uh, pictures to talk about. Welcome to this module in which you will be provided with oh. an overview of the human body it's... and the physiology. Oh, I'm of sorry. I think that systems. is that is my YouTube. Sorry about that. All right. So this one is the um, another conversation. And this one is talking about past activities. How was your weekend? What did you do? So I modeled this and we write sentences about what my students did. So let me show you here real quick. This was made with a TikTok account. My son and I went to the beach. We also walked at the Oceanside Pier. So there is pictures about each action. We went shopping. We drank a lot of iced tea. Very simple. There is nothing else other than, and TikTok is pretty simple to use, user-friendly. Um, so I think that is it for my portion of this presentation. Thank you very much for, for watching. Is there any questions that we need to address right now before my um, colleague Katrina Tamura? begins let's see i think i saw a lot of chat here and yes awesome so i'm gonna give it up to katrina tamura thank you Hey, um, I'm just hoping I'm in the right slide here. <laughs> okay. um, hi, my name is Katrina Tamura, and I um, am a colleague and um, and friend. And uh, Chris is my also my mentor. So I adore working with people like this who are so creative. Um, and Chris, it's amazing what you do, and you, you are an inspiration. Um, so um, I want to show you my. Uh, my less engaging um, practices here uh, using Buncee and Bitmoji. Um, and I do, I use these with my um, low intermediate students um, to, I use Buncee to reinforce understanding of idioms, um, encourage student participation, and provide visual associations with new words and phrases. Um, and then I also use Bitmoji to personalize um, 
my delivery. Um, and um, so if you are interested in a kind of a more in-depth um, review of Bitmoji, I did post a, a video here. Um, this is, a, it's a, an entire presentation about um, Bitmoji. So when you get our slides, you can just click through and, and watch this um, if you are really interested in it. And there are lots of teaching ideas in it. Um, but I'm going to go over um, this one right here. This is um, a, um, this is from Buncee. Um, and this is um, an example of an idiom um, that, or, or a way I teach idioms um, in my class. Um, and I actually was able to build this idiom um, using images that are um, in Buncee. Um, Buncee is a creation tool. It's also uh, an online classroom. Um, and you can use it to make uh, daily uh, like message boards or um, slides or um, have students create projects on their own. Um, and this one I um, was creating, I, I wanted to explain which, which idiom, which idiom do you think it is? You can type it into chat. Okay, if you said helicopter parent, you are correct. Um, so I wanted to explain um, a lot of people, like the students, they, they don't really understand helicopter parent or what it means at first, but it, this gives a good visual. And then I can also um, move the child around, like everywhere she goes, she her parent is there. And I can also add in um, different characters. I can add in a father, so it could be a helicopter mom or a hel helicopter dad, or a helicopter parent. Um, so this is, uh, you can just pick whichever images you would like um, and build the idiom um, that you are trying to explain. Um, let me go back. Um, and this one and this one, I uh, was using Buncee to create um, a street scene to explain directions, um, prepositions of directions, prepositions of place. Um, and of course, um, on its face, it's just a picture, but if I log in, if I edit, um, I'm able to actually um, move this car around my city. So I'll ask students, um, how do you get from the community pool to the courthouse? And they will um, tell me to go straight and to turn left, um, go one block past the Sunny Day Park, um, go uh, across, it, the, the courthouse is across the street from the um, Sunny Day Park, um, stop on the right, stop on the left. Um, and I can also ask, uh, you know, uh, where is the shoe store? Oh, the shoe store is kitty corner to, um, to the parking lot. Um, so this, this element here, being able to um, build the street scene and then have movable parts is very helpful, especially in the online environment when um, you're trying to teach things like prepositions of place, prepositions of direction. Um, it's often very hard for students to uh, get oriented and um, be able to um, really visualize uh, what they're saying, what they're being asked um, and what they're saying. Um, and to do this, I'm going to show you a blank um, board here. So um, I've created, this is a plain slide. And what I did to create my scene um, was I clicked add your first item. And I was looking for streets. So I um, type in streets to my search bar and enter. Um, and then it comes up with all these different street grids I can choose from. So I picked a few of them and I added them. And then I made them the size I wanted and I put them in the places I wanted them. And then I found uh, I, I needed places. 
right? So I, again, added an item. So you go up here to the corner and you add an item. And I needed a car. So I typed in car. And I found lots of different types of cars. So um, I'll add the car and now I can drive the car on the, on the street. Uh, okay, oops, I was looking for places, wasn't I? So let me, let me see, um, I'll search for a place, okay? Uh, place. Okay, so uh, maybe a fireplace. No, that's not specific enough. I'm going to ask for a park. Okay, so if I type in park, I'm going to get lots of different options. Here's my park. I want that one. So I can place my park wherever I want and then have my car um, go there um, and have students tell me um, where to go. Um, and how to get there. Uh, and this can be a lot more complicated too. So I, I did another scene where I had this um, more complicated um, street grid where I added street names so students could say uh, the police station is between Summer Lane and Gopher Lane. Um, it is Kitty Corner or it, uh, the police station is Kitty Corner to the pool. Um, it is across from the schoolhouse. And then I added in a bus this time. And so the bus drives around the city as students tell me where to go um, and how to get there. And they can e even ask each other so I can, it, while I'm in Zoom, I can ask them, okay, so Francis, why don't you ask Henry to, uh, for directions to the grocery store? Um, and the, the students will um, ask each other, how do I get from this place to this place? And then I manipulate the uh, vehicle on the screen. Um, and if their, if their responses are correct, then the bus or the car arrives as, at its destination. If not, every, um, other students will kind of chime in and help with the, the directions. And eventually we get to where we're, we want to go. Um, so this, I think, has been very helpful. Um, there's lots of ways you can use Buncee. Uh, your students can also um, go ahead and, and create a board similar to this. Um, and uh, they would do that if you give them, if you create a, uh, a class, right? And um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, this is my Buncee teacher board. My, my Buncee account. So I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead to my account, and I see all of my Buncees, my daily slides that I have for my class. Um, uh, I have, you know, the daily um, check-in board where I tell them what we're going to do and when we're going to do it, um, and also uh, different pictures or, or um, discussion um, prompts I might have. Um, and I have all of those logged in here. But I wanted to show you how to create a class um, and then share um, a password with your students so they can then log in and create their own board. So you'd go up to classes and uh, you'll create a new class and you can call it anything. I'm going to call it OTAN today, okay? And I'm going to create it. And you can see OTAN today. I have this class and I'm going to add a student. Um, so you can put their first, first name and last name. So I'm going to put OTAN, um, OTAN learner. Now you can create a, one, a, a username and password for each person in your class, but today I'm going to create one and I'm going to share it with you so that you can then go to Buncee, log in, and create a board. So OTAN Learner, username, um, let's say uh, OTAN Learner, okay? We'll just name you OTAN Learner and then we'll give you a password, happy one. So I need these things in order to create 
um, a student account and then I'm going to add. This is no cost to um, the student. The teacher, you can get a free account and try it for a month or um, and then pay their fees after that which is like ten dollars um, for a teacher account. Um, but it's no cost to the student ever um, when you share a password with them. So I'm gonna save this. And I have uh, my OTAN learner, right? Um, and I want to maybe give them um, the username and password for this course. So I'm going to select them, select this uh, learner, and I'm going to down, uh, change the password. Let me see. I'm going to do a simple login uh, because a lot of our learners don't like <laughs> complicated usernames uh, or passwords. So I'm going to click two images. I'm going to say a butterfly and a ladybug. I'm going to save that. Okay. And I'm going to update. So that's now my learner's uh, password. And I'm going to uh, Again, click this one and then download the login page. And here's my uh, a little card I can share or an image that I can share um, with my student, um, giving them their username and password. So this is your username and password today. So uh, take note of it um, so you can try this later on. Um, go to Buncee and you can um, enter OTAN Learner and sim your simple logon will be a butterfly and a ladybug, okay? Um, so OTAN learner, butterfly, ladybug. Um, so when you go to the, uh, to, uh, the Buncee homepage, you'll just log in as a student, okay? Um, and so that is how you create that. Um, and uh, let me see, I have some questions in here that I'm gonna check to see if you all right, so the word ladybug or the image. The image, you'll, um, it'll act actually show you an image of a ladybug. Um, and it says, very simple. Um, yeah, and it, it is secure with just the, the username and the password. Um, and it's easy to remember. Um, now, remember today, every, all of you are going to be using the same account. Okay, so you're going to see everybody else's boards in there. Um, but usually when you create one for each student, um, you can create a unique um, username. And you can use the same password for everyone if you would like. You can apply the same password, the same images to the entire class. Um, so everyone has the same visual login. Um, but you can create a, a unique username for each person. Um, so let me see. Um, okay. Katrina, how long did it take for you to create that map? Um, it, it takes a while and um, you have to kind of play around with it. Um, let me um, exit this and, and show you a little bit more inside that one. Um, so I, um, I had to get each piece, right? I had to look for um, each item. So um, again, the community pool, I, I just thought of a place and then I searched for it um, here. So I add an item and I can use a web image or a, a Buncee animation. Animations are ones that move, um, little images that move or stickers or messages or emojis. A lot of times I just search for just general. So I, I looked up pool. Um, I just thought of places in the community and it comes up with different images. Um, and for example, people, if I wanted to add people, just add people and it'll give me a, a, a wide range of usable images. I don't have to worry about copyright or anything like that because it's within Buncee. It's all, um, it's all okay for me to use. Um, and uh, I could also do, uh, if I wanted to search on the web, if I'm not finding the image I want, I can search using Pixabay, okay? Uh, and then Buncee credits Pixabay. They, they um, 
there is a link connected to my board. So I don't even have to think about it. Um, but for example, if I wanted to add um, a pool from Pixabay and it'll give me um, different images here that I could use. Um, and I could just post them around. Um, so it, this takes a little bit, uh, my city planning took a little bit of manipulation and um, putting things in the right places. Um, and of course, one day I did the, the simple map and then the next day, oops, we know more, so we're going to do more. Um, we, I went with a more complicated map. Um, all right, and let me see, any more questions on that? Um, yeah, it is very convenient. Um, yeah, and, and one thing, um, you can add text in here. Um, you can add uh, video students could actually make their own board and then re, um, create a video of themselves giving the directions or asking the questions like how do you get from the pool to the courthouse and then leave that image there leave that video um, embedded into um, their Buncee board um, or they can um, just they can add an audio file um, they can add links um, and you can add a youtube channel um, all of those things are available right here, and it's available to both the teacher and the student. The student can't manipulate my board. Um, that's one thing, but I can, um, they can create their own. Um, let's see. Uh, and can you add a Bitmoji to the Buncee slide? Yes, I do that often um, when I'm creating my... Uh, I'll show you how to do that, actually. Um, you, if you see up here on my toolbar, I have um, Bitmoji on my um, web browser. I'm going to show you how to do that soon. Um, and you can, um, I can search for something like, where, right? Where are you? I'm, I'm lost. Um, and this is, I do this a lot. Um, if, it, if we have a certain theme, um, then I'm going to, of course, look for that theme within um, Bitmoji um, and then post it. Um, so I just looked for it. I saved that Bitmoji to my computer. And now I'm going to go to Add. And I'm going to Upload. Drag my Bitmoji to my file, uh, to um, the file loader and upload it. And now it's here in my Bitmoji, in my um, Buncee. Uh, and somebody just add, does that mean uh, multiple students can use the same login simultaneously? Um, that um, they can, but like I was explaining that the privacy issue, like today, I, I provided that for you. So you can go in and you're gonna create your own board, right? You're gonna create um, a board yourself. Um, to try it out, to test it, but then you're going to lose access to that um, after a few days. And then um, also other people will be able to see your boards. Okay, so for our students, that's not ideal. You don't want to give everyone the same username and password. For this situation where we're just all colleagues and we're exploring um, and we're not going to, uh, I, I don't think anybody's going to be malicious and erase somebody else's Buncee board, <laughs> um, we, it's okay to do that. But for your students, I would keep it, you know, uh, one username per student and then give them a login, okay? Um, get, you can use the same login for everyone, that's fine. Um, so uh, to create a new board, when you log in, um, you're going to see my Buncees, okay? Um, and yeah, let me make sure I'm sharing that. You'll see my Buncees and you'll create a new board. And um, then it can, you can start from scratch or you can pick from a, a bunch of templates. I never use the templates. Um, but if you want to use a template, you can look through them and see if anything would be useful to you. So I start from scratch and then I can start adding um, the items. I can change the background. Um, I can look through a set of 
backgrounds um, that are already available. Um, and then I can add text, right? I can say, uh, this is what you're going to be doing today. I, I am Katrina, um, and I teach at Miracosta College. Um, I teach ESL. Um, you can post things like that. You could also post your, an image, right? You can upload your image. You can upload, uh, you can record a message for everyone. Um, I don't know if I can do it right now. Let me see. Uh, it's probably not going to let me because it's, um, it's sharing um, the, it's sharing Zoom. Okay. Um, so um, let me see bandwidth issues maybe but I think it's more of it's a, it doesn't want me to I can't use zoom and then also um, put my video in um, but so I want you to to try that explore in um, bitmoji or in Buncy um, using that um, username and password I gave you remember um, OTAN learner and simple login okay um, so your username is O10Learner, Simple Login, Butterfly, um, and Ladybug. All right, um, going back to this one, let's see, chat. Um, how do you add more than one image? I'm trying and can't do it. Okay, um, let me show you really quick about adding um, images. So you, you add, and if you're looking for um, let's see, people, okay, um, you're going to click on one person and then another, and do you see how they're both highlighted? They're, they both have this blue. If you don't see the blue around your selection, it means it's not, it's not selected yet. And then you can, it says add to. Um, I'm going to refresh. I'm, I was editing on two pages, sorry. So um, I'm gonna try that again. Um, so I'll add um, an image, people, and then I'll put person and another person and add, okay? So I have my two people here. Um, you just have to make sure that each is selected and you see the, the um, blue um, highlighting around each item. Um, so um, let me go back into um, our presentation here and move on. Um, and uh, I also, in our slides, you can um, play this video here on this slide. Um, and uh, let me see, it says reconnecting. Okay, so you can, um, recon you can watch the video and find out how to add items there. Okay. Um, now for the, for um, Bitmojis, um, you're going to, um, th these are some of my Bitmojis and I use them to personalize uh, my syllabus and to um, add, I add these into my Canvas course. Um, so, uh, oops, I'm signed out. <laughs> Let me sign in. Okay. All right, good. Yay, I'm back. Uh, let me go back. I'm sorry. Doing a lot of things on there. Okay, so um, my Bitmojis help me to um, personalize my teaching and also explain things, um, what things I'm talking about, just like Chris does with hers, like uh, when I'm talking about playing video games, do you like to play video games? What kind of food do you like to eat? Um, what are our goals for today? Do you like shopping? Um, what annoying things do pets do? Um, do you believe in wearing masks? <laughs> um, welcome to class. Um, so uh, these Bitmojis are really nice because um, I just kind of look for the general theme I'm thinking of and then find um, an image that um, will help support what I'm saying. Or what I'm asking students. So um, if you want to add a Bitmoji to your desktop, 
you can download the Bitmoji app on your phone and create your Bitmoji. So that's the first step. You have to create it. It's an app on your phone. Um, you can't create it on your computer, on your desktop. Okay, so download the app and create your Bitmoji. You get to choose your hair color, your eye shape, what you wear, um, and then use Chrome browser to search for, um, for Google extensions. Search for Bitmoji in the Chrome web store. Add the extension. Um, log in to Snapchat or Bitmoji. Um, look for Bitmo the Bitmoji icon on your toolbar. Um, search for the Bitmoji you want using keywords or phrases. Save the image you want to your computer and then upload your um, into your presentations. You can upload these into emails. You can upload um, if from your phone. You can um, text um, bit, your Bitmoji. Um, I use them in Google Voice um, and just regular texting and emails in my um, Google Slides, whatever I'm using. It's very convenient. Um, so um, some other examples um, would be for idioms um, or expressions. Um, I, Bitmoji has some of them. I'll put in um, a, a word or a phrase. And then I'll get something like this, like angry. Oh, look at this first one. Um, it, it's it's a, an expression, right? I've had it up to here. So I can um, explain to students that when I've had it up to here, I'm angry, I'm fed up, I'm, I'm, I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, so it, it really uh, gives a good image. Um, or I'm really steamed. <laughs> I'm, I'm really angry. She had steam coming out of her ears. What does that mean? Oh, she's angry. I can see by her face. Uh, lonely, right? I need a hug. Um, she feels, you know, abandoned. Um, it really gives a good scene, even if I just put a lonely or sad, something like that. Um, um, Bitmoji will come up with something like this. Cry me a river right? What does that mean? Cry me a river. Oh, or um, she's, she's I, crying. She was sobbing. Um, so many tears, so many. Um, anyway, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of, lots of ways you could use that. Um, celebrations, current mood. She's, she's flying. She's in uh, seventh heaven, whatever it is. Um, she's running on empty. Uh, she's exhausted. Okay, so um, those are several ways you could use Bitmoji. Um, and I'm going to turn this over to um, a far more interesting presenter, um, Christy Reyes. Okay. Okay, so um, pretty hard acts to follow there. Um, I, this is what happens when you're not logged in for a while. So bear with me for one moment to get to the slides. There we go. Is this it? Hope you're getting lots of great ideas. Um, so I teach more of an advanced level and um, I can have them produce more language, really we're working with vocabulary, grammar, um, and so forth. So I'm going to share some of the things that um, I have had students do, and these all worked in the online environment for remote instruction. Have you ever heard of the site New York Times, what's going on in this picture? If you can type yes or no in the chat. Has anybody heard of that site? Okay, good. Some of you, yes. Some of you, no. So um, I discovered this site. And once you sign up for it, you get these emails. And they have all kinds of student writing prompts that are amazing. They have what's going on in this graph, which is great practice for our students to get um, that kind of literacy. So um, when I discovered this site, I was thinking, I, oh, I love these pictures. They're so interesting. How can I use them? 
<clears throat> so for the EL Civics unit, um, we are working on students needed to ask questions. So I wanted them to have confidence and skill in asking questions. So I took some of the pictures from the New York Times, what's going on in this picture. And you can see they're very interesting and thought provoking. And so I modeled, um, we were in Zoom and I asked them for every picture that I show you, I want you to type at least one question. Okay, so I, I modeled how, what questions I may ask and elicited, elicited some questions that they may have about this picture. And then we went on with some of the other pictures. So you can just see that they're very interesting um, photos. Some of them <clears throat> are older. And so students, <clears throat> excuse me, they <clears throat> wrote their questions. I captured the chat, excuse me, I have to talk for a second. And then um, we did some error correction the following day. And it's if you ever do error correction, it's so interesting that students can always pick out their errors. Um, so, OK, great. That's your um, agency is having um, a professional development. Uh, oh, let us know about that. Maybe we could bring them to our school, too, or have a regional or something. So you can see these are the, some of the questions that they wrote. And as we went through them, they were able to correct their own questions. It was it was really um, interesting. So it was a little bit of a diagnostic for me, seeing what verb tenses they were using and what they could do. And then at the end, I showed them the caption. So each of these images have a caption that tells what the, the picture is all about so they could have their questions answered. Um, so that was a great grammar activity. I'm so sorry. I know I didn't put these. Um, I did not put in these uh, uh, transitions. Um, I'll see if I can fix that in a minute. So um, they had a lot of fun with this. They really did. And um, it was a way to have a context for the grammar. Let me try to change the transitions if I can. There we go. Okay, that should be better. Thank you for letting me know. Um, then I, um, during the summer, um, we worked on parts of speech and writing a lot. And so we went over adjective use and I used these pictures this time. I put them in a, a shared Google, Google slideshow and I assigned one group to a different picture and I gave them a time limit and I said that they had to work together to write a description of one of the pictures and they had to use as many adjectives as they could. This was the winning team right here. You can see that they wrote a really great description of this image and they used 12 adjectives. So it helped them become more descriptive in their writing. Um, so it was a really good practice leading into when they were going to write their own individual um, descriptive paragraphs. Oh, it's still there. Um, let me see if I can fix that one more time. Transition. I thought I said none. Um, I think you need to click on apply to all slides. Okay. Yeah. I'm not seeing the none. Do you see the none? Oh, I don't know. Sorry, guys. Click, click on the gray, uh, yeah, box. On the, um, uh -huh. click now. Uh -huh. Click on that gray box. But it's still. Uh, oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. Okay, thank you. All right. So, hopefully, no more dizziness. Here we go. Um, in my advanced class we do a lot of um, practice with idioms every now and then because they're advanced and um, in addition to the academic word list i want to, them to learn some new expressions that they hear uh, around them and so um, for this term this was also in the summer um, i made a playlist um, of a channel that has a lot of um, videos about one. there's one video per idiom is a great channel and they had to watch the video outside of class time um, write down what the idiom meant and then um, write down the etymology if it was given and an example and so um, at the end of the class after eight weeks um, I wanted them to test their classmates but instead of giving a traditional test what I did is I created a shared Google slideshow and I had the students 
um, work together to put in a picture that would help the, their classmates remember and kind of quiz their classmates on the different idioms. So I made up this, this was a sample. I can't believe this storm. Yes, it's, if you know the answer to this idiom, if you know the rest of it, go ahead and type that in. It's, what do you think? Yes, it's raining cats and dogs, uh, Audrey. So um, here was another one. It's not hard, it's a, uh, anybody? Piece of cake, exactly. And please don't, and this idiom comes directly from boxing actually. What does the trainer usually do? <laughs> don't hit your teacher. <laughs> Um, please don't don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Okay. Um, here were some other students. I haven't seen you for a long time, but we meet each other here. What a small world. So obviously they they were able to come up with the idioms faster because they had studied them over the eight weeks. Um, I like to use picture prompts to um, have students produce grammar, so the speaking and the writing. So this is one I've used at all different levels when reviewing um, present continuous. So we go over, you know, the form, and then I show them some pictures. And um, in a on ground classroom, they turn to a partner and, and tell the partner what what they see in the picture, what the person or what is happening. And so this one. Um, easy enough he is eating a hamburger but for my advanced students i i want them to produce a more descriptive sentence so um, what would you say instead of he um the man okay the man wearing a helmet the man wearing the helmet is eating what kind of hamburger he's eating a gigantic enormous hamburger so they here are just a couple i have um several but i just wanted to share it because it's kind of funny for them and usually there's a lot of laughing when um, they're doing this uh, productive exercise so we could have them do dialogues of course but um i wanted to spice it up and make it a little more interesting and so i always tell them this is me on the weekends if you're ever wondering what i'm doing on the weekends um some other grammar um in my class we practice um every now and then adverbs of agreement because they're a little bit hard um so too either neither and um so i have a lot of practice built in with a lot of retrieval where they're practicing that grammar but then i want them to use that and at the same time um i some i use um, some lessons that help them learn and review comparative and superlative adjectives so I have some images for that. And then I put those two together um, with a project where they describe, uh, describe a friend or family member. So <clears throat> this was one um, pair of students. They interviewed each other and they found out what their similarities and differences were and they chose pictures. So you can see what they like, what they don't like, um, their goals things that scare them, and so on. So they had to think of images and communicate. So here's the um, comparative and superlative adjectives review. Oh my goodness, she has very long fingernails. But wait, his are, and they could, you know, so we've gone over it before, but it's the retrieval practice to get them to produce. His are longer, but hers are the longest. This is a hard job being a student, but his, his job is harder, right? But this one is the hardest, you know, building or digging um, out uh, mines or something. This is a big house. Wow, that's bigger. <laughs> and that one is the, and so they need help with a little prompting now and then to remember how to form the superlative, right? So then um, these are pictures from hotels actually in our area. I had a student whose family managed this one downtown Carlsbad. And so um, that is a very expensive, and I tell exactly what the price is because I asked the students who'd been in my class. This is the Olympic Hotel in Carlsbad. It's more expensive. But I had a student who worked at La Costa Resort and Spa. And one time there was a visitor, she was a princess from some Middle Eastern country, and she booked a whole floor of the resort. 
and it was $15,000 a night for the floor. So the most expensive. Um, ugly dog, sweet dog, but uh, oh, uglier. Every year there's an ugly dog contest. And this guy, he was the ugliest last year. Ice cream, this ice cream's really good. This one's better. My personal favorite, this is the best. Oof, this is a bad job. It is a real job though. They test antiperspirants and deodorants. That one's worse, wouldn't you agree? And this is dangerous. It's the worst job of the three. And then I talk about where students are from. So here we are in Southern California. Um, some of you are from Mexico, that can be far, but um, Joanna's from Colombia, that's farther. And then we have, um, we have Vitalia who's from Lithuania. That's, she's from the farthest away country, right? Um, this is a little money, this is less, this is the least. So I'm not saying these words like I am with you, but I'm just trying to go faster. So they're, they're being prompted to do that. Then we talk about e equal. So, oh, baby one is as cute as baby two, et cetera. And then a lot of times what I do is have students then go into a shared slideshow and they, they are assigned a few adjectives and they have to create the images. And this is um, a final piece where they've combined that grammar. Um, I didn't have a student um, example to show, but they had the option of making a video or just adding a picture. But I always give a model of what I expect. So here they're using both comparative and superlative adjectives. And OK, so that's how that one's repeated somehow. And so that's how um, I have students use some images. I wanted to tell you about picklets. Have any of you ever heard of picklets? Can you share in the chat if you have? Yes or no? An ugly person contest. OK, um, so let me just do a very quick demo. You do need an account, but this could be something that you have students do completely on the fly. You know those lessons that you know, they go a little bit faster than you expected and you're wondering what can I have students do now? Well, you could have them go to Picklicks and make an account. So um, I believe I'm already signed in and um, there is um, there are lesson plans built in even. This is the newer website. There is an older site as well. So then what we do is um, we can go ahead and, and create. And I, don't, I thought I was signed in, but let me just go here. OK create a picklet and the photographs change like I don't know if, if it's still every day it used to be every day so um, students really need to make that account and save um, their work if they didn't finish in one class meeting for example but they're scrolling images and you can choose one. Oh my gosh look at this one so interesting so what it gives you with these images um, are a list of nouns adjectives adverbs um, verbs and then articles and things like that, prepositions, pronouns. And they can do um, a drag and drop. So they can go, uh, let's see, is there the word very? So they can be working together. And what you do, um, once you drag uh, one of the words, there's a little drop down arrow. And then they need to discuss, okay, yeah, we do need a capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. So they can use the words that are provided, but there's also something called freestyle where they can just type on the image. So this would be a great way to um, have students practice whatever grammar that you're teaching um, based on the pictures here. So I really recommend Picklets. It's, it's um, easy to use as you can see and no prep time for the teacher, yay. <laughs> okay, so um, going back to the slides. That's Picklets. Um, let me see. I think that I got lost in the slides, so excuse me. Okay, so um, for phrasal verbs, um, if you use the Black Azar book, the workbook has preposition combinations and phrasal verbs. I don't know if you ever noticed that. They're not in the textbook. So um, what I've done is create slideshows and for students to have the retrieval practice, conversation questions, discussion boards, and quizzes in my learning management system. Um, so we go over, ask out, to call off and I talk about the different pictures 
and how this this would um, be an example of calling off a, a game, for example, put away versus put back. And then they have some conversation. Um, so they got into their uh, Zoom breakout rooms and they have to use the phrasal verbs and make complete sentences to answer the questions. And then those same questions are, are written um, in Canvas, the learning management system, they have to post their answers to some of the questions and reply to classmates. So then they're having conversation by writing with different students than they had in the Zoom classrooms. Then I do a little review, put what? Yeah, put out, you're right. Ask what? Ask out. So retrieval, practice, repetition, and, and visual cues are really research-based as the way that we can learn and remember. Now, ESL students, depending on their um, first language, but it's pretty much universal, have troubles with make and do. So um, I found a, a book that has a, a lot of different examples. And so we go over the book exercises and then we do the retrieval practice. And same sort of thing that they have some conversation questions and a discussion board where they do some writing. So we go over make and do, repeat a lot of times until it just comes automatically. Now um, for memes, what you could do, there is something called a meme generator. And this would be a really great way for students to demonstrate their understanding of new vocabulary. So let's imagine that one of my vocabulary words is inadvertently. So that's some, a word I've taken from a reading. And um, we go over it, we, we look at the dictionary definition, we write sentences about ourselves. And then it's really great for students to have a picture cue to help them remember the vocabulary. So um, with meme generator, they go in and they write a sentence and select a picture that will help demonstrate that sentence. So he wasn't paying attention to the road. He inadvertently missed his exit was what one student put. That showed to me that the student really does understand this word. And so they can take all of their memes that they've created and put into maybe a Google shared um, slideshow. And then they have a, a, like a class dictionary of um, images, like, like a picture dictionary. Um, you can also, I think Chris went over this much more and in depth than I did, so I won't spend time with that. But you could also use or have students find a Giphy to um, represent vocabulary that you're teaching them. This one would be persistent. Um, I, I don't use GIFs as much as Chris. You can see that they're very effective for beginning levels. I use them sometimes for a Zoom opener like this one. And when you get, um, when you get the slides at the end, you can look at all of this. But um, while we're waiting for students to come in, it was just, how do you feel today with some different GIFs? And they just replied in the comments. Okay, I wanna ask you, um, do you all know how to annotate in Zoom? I'm not, uh, hopefully it is um, activated. It may not be in Zoom right now. Do you see the, do you see the annotate? I do, I hope you do. So if you click on annotate, let me check the chat here. Okay, good. So if you see that pencil in the black bar, click on it and in a moment, what I want you to do, um, a new little window or box, toolbox will open and you can write text, you can draw or stamp. So, um, you know, that's a, um, a good way to keep um, students engaged in your synchronous online classes. Um, so here, here's another um, Zoom opener. So we're waiting for students to come in um, and they can then annotate. So if you want to try it, go ahead and click annotate and put a stamp where you, um, which Giphy, which image um, shows your current mood. Okay, so I'm going to try that. Click on the annotate. Another toolbox usually opens at the top, but it might be different. I'm going to check stamp. I'm going to choose a heart. Let's see. Um, Okay. Oh, and then we can, it's kind of cute because then we can see how everybody's feeling today. And so um, you'll need to clear um, the annotations, but here's, it's just another simple way you could use GIFs. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the annotations and close that. 
um, emojis. There's something called a um, random emoji generator. And I was trying to think of a more interesting way that I could have students do collaborative writing. Okay, so what I did, you could do this on the fly right in your Zoom class meeting or whatever you're using for video conferencing. You could use the random emoji generator and you get to choose how many emojis. Okay, so I chose five and then I put students together. And so they had these emojis and they, they um, actually each group had a different set of emojis, okay? And then what they did is, um, so team one had these, these emojis. Team two had a different set of emojis. So team one had to look at this and write a story or write sentences at least. And here's what team one wrote. I was going to cross the street when I saw the no crossing sign and there was a chicken in my way. <laughs> I was late for fishing with my friends because I was eating a plate of pasta and a delicious donut. It showed me that they could really um, use descriptive language once again. So then the next team, th these sentences were passed to team two, and team two had to build on those sentences to make the story even more interesting. And then team three, you can see they wrote even longer. So they were using basically the same story, but just adding to it. So that helps a lot when you're asking students to revise their writing and be more descriptive and more um, explicit. Um, I love to use um, um, teams for writing practice. So actually there's a technique, I learned this at my very first CATISOL conference in 1998 in Long Beach, I remember. And um, this is kind of based on that. It was based on pictures, but I've, I've used videos instead. instead. So, um, I ask students, we've been practicing past and past continuous. What are some good reasons to miss work or school? What are some bad excuses? And then um, I model this, okay? So I kind of elicit like, so this is what you're gonna get in your team, different words, but a set of words. And you need to talk together and write sentences predicting what you're going to see in a video. What do you think you're going to see? So um, if anybody wants to try it out, you can type in the chat, what do you think this story could be about? There's an announcer, call, friends, um, golf, loudspeaker, man named sick trouble. Hmm, what could this story possibly be about? And so then they tell me, okay, and I, I type their little um, sentences, and then we watch the actual video. I'm not going to show this to you. We'll share the slides and you can watch it on your own. Um, but basically, it's, it's a man. He is calling his boss um, because he wants to miss work. He's pretending he's sick, but he's actually at the golf course with his friends. And as he's talking on the phone with his um, coworker or his boss, they announce his name over the loudspeaker. Um, but of course, I didn't use um, past and past continuous, but that's what students do. They, so um, I found this one video and um, it's called Table 7. Vimeo has some really great short films if you've ever looked at Vimeo. And this one, I was thinking, I really want to use this in my class. It's such an interesting video. And so let me show you what students did. Um, this was just this past week that they did this. And so um, they were broken out into their Zoom rooms and they were given this list of words. I had already modeled the golf course one. And um, I have to tell you, it's really funny. So here are the instructions. They can all see it. I put in their names before they got sent to their breakout rooms. So you can see um, there are different stories that they wrote using past and past continuous. So we, we read them the following day and we said, which one is the best? And this team is so funny. So the, the words are down there in the notes area at the bottom of the slide, okay, right there. <laughs> this team cheated, they cheated, but it was fine because they still had to write something. They, um, I guess they must have Googled the words or maybe they had seen this movie. This is the actual video, I'll come back to it. And they found this YouTube video, it's from a movie. I've never seen this movie. I don't think it was highly rated, Mickey Blue Eyes. And it had a fortune cookie scene and it had boyfriend, girlfriend, it had all the words that I had given them. 
And so they found a video and then described. So their story was really great. It was based on a different video. The video I found was this Vimeo um, video about, um, I'll, I won't, I'll leave you in suspense. You should watch it. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. So I'm sure you could think of some way you could use that as a writing prompt for your students. Um, there is another video that I, I love this one because it kind of comes as a surprise to students and it's funny. Um, you know how difficult uh, simple present tense is. I don't know why the word simple is there. Um, but the third person, the pronunciation of the S endings can be um, really challenging for our students. So we, we, I have a slideshow of pictures that show daily activities. I have them talk about their daily activities. And then I ask them, what are some difficult jobs? If you want to participate, you can type in the chat. What do you think? What are some difficult jobs? Okay, I'm gonna look at the chat here, what you're saying. Thank you for the time cue. Minor, yes, a teacher. You'd be surprised. Some, some students say, when I ask the next question, what are easy jobs, they say teacher, and I said, I just make it look easy. It's not easy. <laughs> Garbage collector is very hard. So this kind of clues them in. And I won't show you um, the whole video, but I say, here we are, we're in Southern California. Roofer is hard job. Um, if you were to drive an, um, an hour, depending on the Southern California traffic, you could be in Hollywood, right? And so what, what do you think? Who are some Hollywood actors? What do you think their daily life is like? Do you think it's hard? And then what they do is this is the video i'll just show it just a moment of it because i tell them okay we're gonna see if if it's very cute it's really funny and students always laugh the end is great so um, what I give them is a handout so they're looking for these actions and putting the actions in order and then they have to change to third person what was the correct ending and then we practice those sentences speaking using the the correct pronunciation of the third person s and then they take a little pronunciation quiz um, recording themselves saying those sentences. Um, so I'm almost out of time, but um, an alternative to that is again, just giving images with a list of words and students could, um, they could write the story based on images. Okay, let me see if there are any questions. Um, about the picklets, um, what they could do, well, let's see. Let me just go back to it for one quick second. If they go to the old account, um, the old version, I mean, visit old site. It just doesn't look as flashy. It's just a little bit dated looking, but they could probably do drag and drop. Okay. And then um, let me see what happens when they click on email it to the teacher now they have to create an account but they could do just a screenshot maybe if if no one wanted to create an account let me see if there are any other questions okay so i i wanted to have you do some team writing but i don't think we'll have time for that unfortunately but um you'll get these slides shortly in just a couple of seconds um have any of you ever used flipgrid if you can type yes or no in the chat. Yeah. So Audrey, how, if you can answer in the chat or anybody else, how have you used Flipgrid? What do you have students do? Speaking, introduce themselves. That's a great way to have that first week introduction so they get to know each other, the icebreakers. Checking in with learning throughout the week. Yeah. 
Oh, Chinese New Year. How nice. Flipgrid is it's changed. It used to be strictly, you know, video. Okay, high school students summarizing present on a recent topic. That's excellent. Um, I like to do video projects with my students um, where they're on teams writing a script with a vocabulary or grammar that we're practicing. I've had some great ones over the years. And like some of you too, sometimes I have students um, answer a question based on our weekly discussion topic. Um, and then if you've used Flipgrid, you know that you can reply to the class, uh, to the students videos and they can reply to each other. So one time I had a really, I loved it. It turned out so well. The students loved it. We did this video project and um, they were videotaping themselves with their phones and then they were either texting their um, videos to me, emailing me. It was pure chaos because the quality of everybody's video was different. It was coming at me from here and there. And that's when I found out about Flipgrid and it saved me a lot of time and work. So you could, if you're teaching grammar or vocabulary, have students answer a question in Flipgrid, it's very easy to use. You set up an account in the educator area. So an educator account and then on students' phones, all they have to do is install the free app, enter the code that you give them or scan the QR code that you give them and record themselves. Um, I don't know about you in Zoom. Um, I do not force my students to turn on their cameras. And really, there's been um, a lot of debate about that, and it's it's really um, an equity issue. It is because you know some students don't want to show their backgrounds. So you could show them how to use a virtual background, how to put a virtual background in. That would be a good idea. But um, over the summer, there were some students I never got to see their faces much, even in their introduction. You know, first week icebreaker, they didn't put a picture. So I'm a very visual person. I recognize their voices over time, but I could not, I could not um, recognize if I saw them on the street. But then I got to know them because of Flipgrid. I got to know them more intimately using a weekly um, assignment where they posted a video answering a question. Here are some other inspirational videos that I'd like to use maybe at the beginning or end of class. You should check them out. And um, some other resources and links. So our time is up. Thank you so much for joining us.